Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the screens. The history of the hunter-conservationist goes back millennia to the very dawn of human existence. It is an epic tale of deep trust, close partnership and cooperation between men and women in the quest for survival and meaning. This evening, the Dallas Safari Club has the particular privilege of welcoming a remarkable couple, Chrissy and John Jackson of Louisiana, who are the embodiment of the hunter-conservationist ethos and who are known and respected around the world for their unflagging defense of that ethos. This formidable couple co-founded Conservation Force, a non-profit charitable foundation 17 years ago in order to promote and defend the hunter-conservationist heritage and its indisputable role as the prime tool to conserve wildlife and habitat. About 17 years ago, uh, my presidency of Safari Club International came to an end, and Chrissy's presidency of the Sables of Safari Club International came to an end. Uh, we were basically put out to pasture, and uh, many people came to us and suggested we form an organization to continue our work, and it's uh, proven to be very important. Today, Conservation Force is a powerful consortium of 275 sportsmen's organizations and foundations that all strive together to promote wildlife conservation and hunting advocacy in places as diverse as Mongolia, Kyrgyzstan, South Africa, the lands of the Inuit peoples and the great state of Texas. It takes decades of hands-on experience in the wilds and a multiplicity of skills to achieve what Chrissy and John Jackson have accomplished for the international hunter-conservationist community. Chrissy, proud descendant of the Creek and Cherokee peoples, was born in Florida, where her grandfather taught her to fish as a child. The natural world was at the heart of Chrissy's childhood and youth, and it became her domain in adulthood. I have been very fortunate to be introduced to the outdoors at a young age, and I really, it just blossomed as I grew. And as a child, my grandfather would take me fishing, and my brothers would take me hunting, and it was just so much fun. And then as I got older, uh, I happened to be very lucky and meet this wonderful man I married, and he liked to do both of them, fishing and hunting, so it made my life very exciting. She is a world-ranking angler, being the past holder of two world records for tarpon and barracuda, and the women's current world record holder for tarpon caught off Sierra Leone. Highly skilled with rifle, bow, shotgun and black powder, Chrissy has hunted in 35 countries on four continents. She knows what it means to walk 30 miles a day through thick forest in Ethiopia and over vast distances in Tanzania and Botswana for elephant. She has climbed up 6,000 feet every day in the quest for Bezoard ibex in Turkey. The high altitudes and freezing temperatures of Alaska during a mountain goat hunt hold no terrors for this petite woman who is well known for not competing, but for performing, and for pulling her own load under all circumstances with grace and enthusiasm. The foregoing details indicate that wildlife and habitat conservation are pivotal to Chrissy Jackson's life she has been the fiduciary of literally hundreds of conservation projects and programs and is an active life member of many conservation organizations. Chrissy rendered service of a very high order 
as head for a solid decade of the American delegation to the annual congresses of the International Council for Game and Wildlife Conservation, CIC, Europe's oldest such organization. She is a past president of the Sables of Safari Club International and has been an advanced instructor for the Becoming an Outdoors Woman program. I have to admit that uh, I have a passion for hunting. And through that passion, I have taken the opportunity to move forward in organizations to get things done and do what I can to make sure we have hunting and conservation forever. John Jackson, president of Conservation Force, veteran hunter and angler, wildlife attorney, sport hunting advocate, and accomplished writer, has battle credentials that go back decades. A veteran of the US Navy in the Vietnam War, John graduated in law at Loyola University in 1973 is a member of the United States Supreme Court, amongst a host of other professional and wildlife-related memberships, and is a specialist in international wildlife and outdoor recreational law. As a lawyer, I was um, trained to fight for causes, and I, had, I was a trial lawyer, so I was used to um, taking on matters and, and uh, marshalling the evidence uh, and uh, doing my best with the circumstances for my client. Uh, when um, I became a, an enthusiastic hunter, I saw that hunting was threatened and I wasn't satisfied with the, the fight back. So I, uh, uh, that's what led me to, uh, into it uh, in both advocacy and as well as um, what we call smart conservation projects that, that um, institutionalize hunting to save wildlife in wild places. John's expertise in wildlife issues and on the biopolitical undercurrents affecting those issues has become a byword in Washington, D.C. in particular, where he has propelled some of the most significant achievements on behalf of the international hunter-conservationist community. And the battles have often been tough, prolonged, and bruising, John having often provided legal advice and representation pro bono over protracted periods of time, right into the boxing ring of petitions and litigation. Such is Conservation Force's dedication and conviction. A veteran of many big game safaris on several continents and a seasoned angler who has traveled very extensively with his wife and hunting partner, Chrissy. John is also the recipient of numerous awards for his role as one of the most respected voices in international hunter advocacy and conservation circles. He is a highly sought after speaker on sustainable use of wildlife and on all manner of legal issues pertaining to conservation through such use. John's legal skills and hands-on hunter conservationist credentials have seen him serving in various specialist groups. Conservation Force enjoys international qualified observer status, which enables it to appear before the United Nations Organization and CITES. John has also served on many working groups of CITES, resulting in favorable CITES resolutions for the importing of certain trophies and in enhancing community-based natural resource management strategies. Among this remarkable man's many achievements through Conservation Force for the international sport hunting community are the following. Re-establishing the importing of elephant hunting trophies in a record-breaking pro bono lawsuit against the Secretary for the Interior. Chairing the committee that established the importing of polar bear trophies from the Northwest Territories for the first time in 25 years. Contributing significantly to the importing of Argali hunting trophies from Mongolia and the Commonwealth of Independent States countries that were part of the former Soviet Union. Advancing non-resident hunting rights in the USA. Accomplishing leopard trophy imports from Mozambique for the first time in 25 years. Achieving the downlisting of wood bison and the fourth 
defeating the petition to list all Baja Peninsula sheep as endangered in the Endangered Species Act, defeating the suit to list all Argali as endangered, defeating the proposal to list all Uriel on Appendix 1 of CITES, fully funding crucial research on African lions. John is especially well-versed in dealing with trophy seizure crises, which are an ongoing challenge. John has succeeded in obtaining the release of hundreds of hunting trophies in the last couple of years alone that have been detained or seized for an ever-increasing list of reasons. Conservation Force is now sharing its considerable expertise concerning the ever more alarming plight of South Africa's rhino populations, the target of international criminal syndicates. This is a world patrimony now under dire and escalating threat, and conservation forces closely involved in projects to curb that threat. There is a saying common to many of the Amerindian peoples, namely that we will be known forever by the tracks we leave. Chrissy and John Jackson have already left tracks of selfless dedication, generosity and skill that are an inspiration to all who care for the wilderness areas of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dallas Safari Club now has the greatest honour in inviting you to welcome this outstanding couple, Chrissy and John Jackson. Please welcome John and Chrissy Jackson. This is indeed the most, the highest, most prestigious award we ever expect to receive in our lives. So we thank you. Uh, dear members, hunters, dear friends, and you know who you are. Chrissy and I have been fortunate to be able to further the causes that we care so much about. That's conservation, the natural world, and our sporting way of life. We have been able to live a purposeful wife, life, which is a reward in itself, to, to uh, serve conservation and the community we care so much about. That said, we be, would be remiss if we did not mention those people that mentored us and led to us and everything we've been able to contribute. That's the founding members of Conservation Force that are no longer with us. That's Baron Bertram DeClaire. Bertram with his PhD, unmatchable leader with CITES, IUCN, and CIC. Our beloved Dr. James Tear from Texas here, past chairman of the Texas A&M Wildlife, past president of the Wildlife Society, and an Aldo Leopold Award winner, Dr. Bart O'Gara, 30 years with the U.S. Extension Service, Professor Emeritus at University of Montana, our mentors have over 150 years of conservation, education, and hunting advocacy experience. Of course, there are crucial members of the board today that provide the same or similar services, such as Shane Mahoney, who's here with us today. You all know Shane. He's an expert in the North American model. 
He is, what you may not know, he's been recently chosen uh, as the Global Vice Chair of the Sustainable Use and, Antelope and uh, Livelihood Specialist Group of IUCN. And he's a crucial part of the think tank that Conservation Force initially formed and continues to provide uh, for leadership of the whole hunting world. And Dr. Uh, uh, Philip Chardonnay, who in Paris, who has done all, is doing all the critical work for the African lion. No one today is uh, doing more. He has done the most uh, national action plans from north and, and uh, to the south of Africa. And uh, the first continent-wide comprehensive status review and is in process right now of completing the, what will be the most up-to-date state of view throughout all of Africa or the status of the African line that's so important to us, to us right now. And one board member that's not here is, and you all know, is Bert Kleinberger. <laughs> and Bert is a legendary uh, uh, pioneer of, of so many hunting locations and destinations around the world from one end of the globe to the other. And it's just a, a, a crucial fundraiser and always has been. Now, we must thank also one very important supporter and partner, the most important, and you, uh, you really need to hear this. Whatever we've achieved, it's been Dallas Safari Club's achievement. You are our most important supporter and continue, will continue to be, I hope. And uh, uh, our, our successes are yours. Well, finally and most importantly, we are not by any means finished. We are celebrating tonight, but believe me, there is a lot more to do. And we will help do it. We are We're honored, honored by, by this, this award. award. Thank you. Thank you.